You're listening to Destination University, a podcast for college-bound teens and the parents, mentors, and educators who support them. If that is you, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Welcome to episode 86, How STEAM Students Find Their Passion. Our conversation today is with our resident podcaster, gamer, and teacher. John Cassie is the author of Level Up Your Classroom, a practical guide to game-based learning and gamified classroom, which I am so excited to talk about. If you are a college-bound teen with aspirations of majoring in STEAM majors this for in college, this show is definitely for you. And if you are a champion of STEAM, of STEAM students, whether you are a teacher or a parent, this show is definitely for you. So stick around. Hello, my friends. I'm Dr. Cynthia Colon, your host today, founder of Dream College Academy and College Essay Bootcamp. Welcome to Destination University, where college dreams really do come true. Welcome, John. This is your first time on the show. Hi, Cynthia. And I'm super yeah. excited to have this conversation because STEAM right. is so popular. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a framing that really dates to maybe 10... 10, 12 years ago. We're recording this in 2021. <laughs> and what I what I love about it is that it by combining the ideas, the, the separate notions of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics into one kind of gestalt or into one kind of concept, it it frames for the student and for the school the correct way of thinking about learning in the 21st century, which is really not about the silos, but about the integration, okay? It's not about the, the nodes, it's about the network, right? So for me, if you think of STEAM as a kind of unified way of thinking about an approach to 21st century change, okay? And you properly integrate these disciplines, the teaching of all of them should rise, the learning in all of them should rise, and the capacity of the generation that is emerging into leadership, right? Not millennials anymore. Millennials are 40, right? You know, Generation Z, their already pre-existing commitment to social justice, uh, engagement in the world, problem solving will be that much enhanced because they've got the right frame of mind, right? I graduated from high school in 1986, so I'm, you know, a fossil, right? <laughs> and when we learned, everything was in its separate place, everything nice and separate, right? Like those old cafeteria trays, right? Well, no, no, we need like a big old uh, reframing. And to me, that's what STEAM is. I gotcha. Now, for our listeners who may yep. not be familiar with the term STEAM, but maybe familiar with the term STEM. Yeah. Just, I, I know you said it, but I want you to just say it one more time. So STEM uh, and STEAM, what is the A in STEAM? <clears throat> Arts, okay. Now, what that means to me, right, yep. is there are ways to solve problems that are inelegant, inefficient, unartful, and there are ways to solve problems that are elegant, efficient, and artful, okay? So when you look at really well-designed products or really elegant solutions, what are you looking at? You're looking at products like uh, the Tesla, Model 3, right, a, a $40,000 all-electric car right. that takes automobiles and says, they don't have to look like, they don't have to look like this. They could look like this, right? Or the way that the Apple iPhone has developed to be ever more mm. um, sort of sleek, right? right? And you look at a sort of bridge design, or you look at uh, the SpaceX Falcon capsule, right? 
Uh, or you look at the design for the Voyager Space Hotel, which people may not even know is something that's being developed, right? There's a company that's developing, and I, I said that this was coming 15 years ago. There's a company that's developing essentially a space hotel, okay? You can get there and vacation there. They plan on opening in 2027. It'll probably slip, okay? Right? <laughs> So you look at the design of the Voyager Hotel and it's, it's, it's beautifully elegant, okay? Right, right. So if you do science without having a mind formed by artistic training, it doesn't matter what the art is, okay? Because all art inspires a kind of creative approach to problem solving. That's where this comes in, right? Science wedded to an artistic viewpoint lets you see solutions that maybe a purely scientific approach would not let you see. The same is true in math. The same is true in engineering, right? So it's a way of understanding that art, aesthetics, beauty, integrated with these other techniques actually enhances all of them. I love that. Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah, no, that's the idea. And, and um, you know, the A was introduced to that, the STEM acronym. Um, not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not now. too long ago. Not too long ago. Yeah. But, well, yeah. anyway, you, you know, I, John and I have, have known each other for quite some time now. And, and I went to visit right. TVT and was super impressed right. with, your, with your, what did you call it, foundation, uh, fabrication lab. Fabrication. The fabrication yep. lab. So we're going to get into all of that and we really want to help people understand students and 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 educators how how we right. shape uh, decisions that help students find passions and find their interest and go on to be great right. STEAM, um, uh, you know major and steam uh, majors at colleges but before yep. we do that because um you have this incredible background describe uh, the audience loves to know about your own, our guests and their own college journey. So what were some sort of pivotal uh -huh. moments along your journey in discovering your own, like, you know, you're a gamer and, 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 and um, right. you kind of always had this innovation kind of brain. So where along your journey did you know that? And did you see that? I think I've, I think I've always been this way, right? I mean, you know, like I said, I graduated high school in 1986. That makes me 53. So I started kindergarten in like the early 1970s, but I always feel like I've been interested in, in, uh, in innovative approaches, right? Um, I've, I've, not, I've not ever been um, sort of motivated by small C conservatism, like let's, let's preserve. I mean, I don't, I, I have no opposition to preserving, but I think the future is always, you know, unknowable and is presenting a wide range of new, difficult to understand challenges. And certainly in my lifetime, the pace of change has, in has increased exponentially, right? So that has just sort of reinforced my, you know, my, 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 my pre-existing interest in, in innovating, right? Um, so there was, there was always that interest right and you know in terms of in terms of gaming well th th that's that goes all the way back to my you know my earliest memories as well you know all i ever wanted for christmas was board games right um you know i was an you know i was an early player of of video games you know we had a we had an atari in the house in the late 70s right you know there was nothing i loved more than going to proper arcades you know dropping quarters into games you know um those were the days. And, right. And, you know, to me as a, you know, as a kid in high school or in, you know, in college, super nerd, right. You know, there's nothing more exciting to me than throwing down a really complicated board game with, you know, a 60 page rule book or, you know, playing that for, for forever. And, you know, in tabletop role playing, which was super nerdy in the seventies and in the eighties, but which now is, uh, you know, has YouTube channels with millions of followers watching people play tabletop yeah, they're not even playing they're watching people play right millions of subscribers right you know i'm you know one of the uh 
uh, one of the realities in the COVID pandemic social change, you know, the distancing and all that, is that I've reconnected with many old, old friends, right? And one group of them, you know, I, I, I game mastered, which is to say I managed a tabletop role-playing game session campaign. Well, I played with them probably like eight hours a week on like a Saturday every week for three, four years. What? And now we're, we've picked it up. Oh yeah. I mean, that was, okay. that was this routine. Is, okay. This is what I, I don't understand. And this is why I wanted to have you because I don't understand right. this, this world completely. Right. But right. I, do have, I do have a seven-year-old niece who's watching YouTube videos, watching someone else play, I don't know, I guess a video game. Yeah. That get, happens too. Right. I don't get it. Which? But what, like, when you were, what did you major in in college? Were you major? I mean, that, like you said, you've already, we've already disclosed a little bit of sort of, I, I'm, I'm a tiny bit younger than you, but <laughs> basically, like, they didn't have- 29 coding. looks good on you, Cynthia, right? <laughs> they didn't have coding as a, as a major back when we went to college. So what did you major in or, and or what did you do, you know, even after college that set you on this path of, of having the role that you have now? Yeah. Well, I mean, look at where I went to school. I went to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Okay. And in the eighties and early nineties, there was a very robust computer science program at UMass. We had, you know, computer engineering, electrical engineering, there was computer science major. Uh, it was totally, it was great. Right. For those people who had that interest, that wasn't my jam. Right. I was always much more into uh, tabletop games. Okay, you know, um, board games, you know, with proper, you know, equipment, you know, and, uh, you know, role playing games, which are really about a, a role playing game is basically an opportunity for four or five or six people to get together around a table, and then to collaborate in telling a story that is either, a, you know, kind of a one off. So the story is told over two or three hours of collaborative play. Or it's a campaign where it, it goes on, it doesn't have a, a, a specified end, right? And so I majored, I ultimately, I, I went kind of, you know, like a lot of people, I, I noodled around, you know, I did a little sciencey stuff and I did a little um, hotel, restaurant and travel administration, a little business because UMass's HRTA program is one of the finest in the country. I eventually landed in history and in classics Okay, because frankly, I mean, what, what, I, what I say to students who, you know, they want to work in film or they want to tell stories or they want to, you know, they want to write or, you know, they want to engage their creative side. What I, what I say is, well, you, you ought to major in something that is about telling a, the story of the human condition, right? So that would be sort of your history, English, comparative literature, uh, you know, area studies, you know, uh, you know. Uh, East Asian studies, Western European study, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? And, and you ought to do that because that's going to enhance your ability to, to tell stories, right? For me, one of the E's in STEAM ought to be entrepreneurship, which is ultimately just about effectively telling stories of problems that need solutions and your solution to them, right? So, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I came to this sort of, you know, sort of honestly and through, uh, you know, lots and lots and lots of, lots of play, lots of work, right? You know. So let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the, the uh, I believe in entrepreneurship and um, I love that sort of thinking in terms of steam.